This is an introduction to significant figures. Let's start by looking at some measurements made by stepping onto a scale three different times. We arrive at 213 pounds, 214 pounds, and 212 pounds. If we were to calculate the average of these values, we wind up with 213 pounds. We can also say that the uncertainty is plus or minus one pound, and that the last digit in the measurement is the uncertain digit. This leads to a term that we will hear often throughout this course, called significant figures. We define significant figures as all of the certain digits in a measurement plus one uncertain digit. Most measurements have some sort of uncertainty associated with them. For example, if we have a balance that measures out to the nearest one thousandth of a gram, we might measure it out to something like 3.167 grams. Or if we had a thermometer that measured out to the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius, we might record a measurement as 18.6 degrees Celsius. Since significant figures are all of the certain digits in a measurement plus one uncertain digit, 3.167 grams would have four significant figures, and 18.6 degrees Celsius would have three significant figures. Going back to the average reading on the scale of 213 pounds, this value would have three significant figures. Now the place where introductory students have the most trouble is dealing with zeros. Let's consider these examples. We have two types of zeros. They are what we call leading zeros and trailing zeros. Leading zeros are all of the zeros out at the front of the number before the first non-zero digit. We say that leading zeros are not significant since they help us locate the decimal point. Trailing zeros are all of the zeros that come at the end of a number. We say that trailing zeros are significant if the number has a decimal and that they may or may not be significant if the number has no decimal. Looking at the first two masses, we can assume that each measurement was made to the nearest thousandth of a gram. In one of these two cases, this uncertainty is a big deal. In the other, it is not. In the case of 0 0.003 grams, we can say that the uncertainty is a big deal since the uncertainty is one-third of the actual measurement. Relatively speaking, this is huge. It would be just like saying you scored 90 on an exam, plus or minus 30. You see? You probably wouldn't like that. By definition, this measurement would only have one significant figure, since the leading zeros don't count. In the case of 3.000 grams, we can say that the uncertainty is not a very big deal, since the uncertainty is one three thousandth of the actual measurement. By definition, this measurement would have four significant figures, since trailing zeros count. To summarize, in cases where the uncertainty is a really big deal, we will have fewer significant figures, and in cases where it isn't such a big deal, we will have more significant figures. Moving on to 0 0.00510 milliliters, we start counting with the first non-zero digit, and we wind up with one, two, three significant figures. Finally, in the case of 400 centimeters, this number has no decimal. This means that the trailing zeros may or may not be significant. If the measurement was made to the nearest 100, we would have one significant figure. If it was made to the nearest 10, we'd have two significant figures. And if it was made to the nearest one, we would have three significant figures. Therefore, the number of significant figures is ambiguous, and we could have anywhere from one to three significant figures. In order to clarify the number of significant figures and numbers of trailing zeros that have no decimal, we usually write them in scientific notation. So if we wrote 400 as four times 10 to the second, this would have one significant figure. If we wrote it as 4.0 times 10 to the second, we would have two significant figures, and if we wrote it as 4.00 times 10 to the second, we would have three significant figures. Now there may be some measurements that are exact and have no uncertainty. 
Such measurements would include defined relationships or conversions, such as the English-to-English -English conversions on your conversion sheet, or metric-to-metric -metric conversions. For example, if we say that for every one foot there are 12 inches, we don't mean that there's 11.9999 inches in one foot or 12.000001 inches in one foot. We mean that there is exactly 12 inches in one foot. Since an exact measurement has no uncertainty, we can also say it has an infinite number of significant figures. Counted items may also be exact. For example, if we counted eight coins in a pocket, or 25 people in a room, or four wheels on a car, all of these are examples of exact values. And once again, exact values have an infinite number of significant figures. Now just because we count doesn't mean it will always be exact. For example, if we're counting a large number of coins in one's pocket, or a large number of people in a room, it is possible we could wind up with some uncertainty simply due to the large quantities involved.